folks who need it. My name is Stephen Pernick, and I'm running to be your representative. I'd like to start by reciting a quote from a mentor of mine that has a lot of meaning. Unless men are led into journeys of powerlessness, they will always abuse power. My family has deep roots in this district. My father, Guy, started a, his, tax, his um, law practice in Clearwater in the mid-1950s. I was born in Morton Plant Hospital and grew up in Tarpon Springs. Graduated Tarpon High. We've got a few Tarpon people here, I think. That's right. I studied business at the University of Notre Dame, where I met my wife, Julie. And Julie, would you mind standing up? Thank you, honey. <laughs> Together, we have six children. It's busy. <laughs> After college, I worked for an entire year uh, in a shelter working with inner city youth in Chicago. Um, for the last 20 years, I worked serving my community through church ministry. In 2007, I started my own tax consulting business, Altus Consulting. Within three and a half years, we became the largest tax consulting company of its type in the state. This is in Iowa. In 2010, with five children at home, my wife and I got some surprising and exciting news. We would be expecting twins. <laughs> and then we found out that my daughter, our daughter, would be facing severe medical challenges, including being born with two holes in her heart. And our hearts were laid bare. And we felt utterly powerless. Unless men are led through journeys of powerlessness, they will always abuse power. We were supported by our community but Iowa also had a waiver program in place that protected my family. And it prevented us from having to choose between the best care for our daughter and my family's financial security. And that program and struggling through that experience confirmed in my own mind that my democratic progressive values are what will save our nation. Namely, that if we hold up the most vulnerable among us, that we can all live in abundance and peace. And so the two major pillars of my platform are fighting income inequality, and eradicating corruption and dysfunction in government. Now, how will we fight income inequality? Well, number one, we are going to recreate our healthcare system. Completely recreate it. Can I see a show of hands of everybody here that absolutely loves our healthcare system? All right. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about the whole, I, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, you guys weren't supposed to wear your hands right there. <laughs> That's okay, no worries. No, no worries. Um, number two, we need to fight for a $15 minimum wage. Now, how are we going to implement that? Well, first of all, we're going to do it on an incremental basis. And we're going to have it apply to publicly traded companies first and then our local community uh, small businesses. And that way we can make that transition which will protect workers without anybody getting hurt. Sure, sure. Well, they're a little strict here on the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 
how are we going to fight corruption and dysfunction in Washington, D.C.? Well, well, number one, we're going to uh, we're going to apply campaign finance reform. We're going to break the link between the money, interests, and our representatives. Number two, we're going to have term limits so that the age of the career politician is over. And number three, we're going to oppose tyranny wherever we find it. If I'm elected and I'm in Washington, D.C. for the first week and Nancy Pelosi comes into my office and says, Stephen, congratulations, welcome to Washington, D.C. Now we'll take it from here. And uh, I want you to sit on the phone for four hours a day. At that point, I'm gonna turn to Nancy, I'm gonna say, Nancy, I've got the New York Times on speed dial. How do you wanna play this? Unless men are led through journeys of powerlessness, they will always abuse power. I've been through those experiences and it has prepared me to be a servant leader and to be your representative. Thank you.